My name is Will, N5 OLA, and this is a Heathkit HP23A power supply. This is basically the kind of condition you'll pick them up on eBay or at a ham fest. Um, probably sat in a garage or a closet for 20 or 30 years. Uh, it's got the it's got the old style non-grounded plug, and the inside. Well, let's just take a look. WA3GHO is a call sign that expired about 25 years ago, so I'm going to assume this has been dormant for quite some time. Anyway, let's look inside. It's got the usual amount of dust. Um, this transformer is probably okay. The choke is probably okay. These are... You just never know with these big can caps. And the problem is, when these electrolytic capacitors sit dormant for a long time, the fluid hardens up and they can blow up. One way to deal with that is to bring these up slow on a variac. Variac stands for variable AC. You can bring these up little by little over the span of 10 hours and try to reform those capacitors. However, if you want a dependable power supply, you really need to upgrade these capacitors. And while you're at it, upgrade the components inside. Got three more electrolytic capacitors. I've uh, got some big carbon comp resistors that have probably gone up in value. That's what they do as they age. These diodes are probably okay. Um, needs an upgrade. Several kits on the market involve gutting this whole area out, installing a circuit board either here or on top here once these are removed. I'm going to be using today a kit by Scott King which is not going to involve getting this out it's going to involve simply replacing these components and replacing these can capacitors and using the original footprint of the chassis that's kind of different the instructions are very well done I'm going to go ahead and read these instructions from start to finish so I know what I'm doing because I've never done one of these before. Okay, these are the materials. We're going to start out by assembling the capacitor boards. Each one of these is a small PC board. And these are called turrets. So step one, I'm going to solder two of these turrets onto the side marked turret side. And the solder really flows nicely on these boards. Look at that. I'm not using solder paste. The instructions recommend it. I don't have any on hand. And as nicely as this flows, I don't think I really need it. The instructions recommend crimping this end of the uh, turret. I tried that and uh, I overdid it the first time. This one right here, I crimped it too much and the uh, capacitor lead wouldn't go through. So I decided not to crimp this time and it did just fine. So next step, we wanna install a jumper. It's gonna go from this can hole right there to this little hole next to the negative post here or turret. And to do that, I scrounged around under my workbench and I found a bunch of old uh, lead clippings. And so I'm gonna just use those. So I bend my jumper into a U like that, just feed it into the hole and solder it on the backside. And so in the end, you'll have something like that times four. We're going to add two more turrets. We're going to add two turrets on the plus side right there. Just be very careful to put these two turrets on the plus end of the board. You can actually see how the solder went through to the back side. So that's a whole lot easier than trying to insert, crimp, and solder on the backside. Okay, next step, we're gonna pick two of these, 
just two. And we're going to put a jumper from ground to this little hole by the negative terminal. Doesn't take a whole lot of solder. Okay, next step, these are spacers and they have the same plus and minus markings. I'm gonna lay that on there so that the uh, holes line up. I'm gonna take one of these 150 microfarad capacitors and run positive to positive and negative to negative, just like so. Fold over, but don't solder yet. We're gonna do that four times. Okay, we now have four completed assemblies. Two of them that have the two jumpers on them, I marked them C2 and C4. The other two that have only the one jumper, I marked them C1 and C3. These two are going to require these uh, insulators. So I'm gonna kind of put them together and just set them all aside because we don't need them right now. We're gonna move on to something else. Okay, now the fun part, tearing things out. We're gonna get rid of these old capacitors C5 and 6 and capacitor C7. Keep in mind that the polarity here is the plus side is going to ground, and here the plus side is going to this terminal strip. Got these pulled, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the bias pot. And by the way, your power supply, if it's not an HP 23A, it may not have this bias pot. Mine does. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open these two tabs, remove the bias pot, disconnect these two resistors, pull out the bias pot, and then disconnect this black choke wire, remove this resistor. And I wanna get this terminal strip off so I can clean it up a bit. Okay, so got those open. Just gonna take a screwdriver, ease that out. I'm gonna leave that green wire on there, but I'm gonna to try to do this by just heating up the solder and see if I can wriggle this thing off of there. Okay, that was easy. Uh, sometimes you'll get a builder who will take these leads and really aggressively wrap them round and round and you might have to just snip them off. But this one came off quite easily. I'm gonna snip, I think this is R5. Snipped it off. Now, I'm gonna get that and get that terminal strip off there. So I've decided that I'm going to just take everything off that terminal strip, all the wires, everything. I want to clean it up a bit, just get as much of that solder off as I can, um, get these wires off of there, and then reinstall that terminal strip nice and clean. Okay, I clipped off that resistor, now I'm left with this. So. You know, you can get a, a desoldering bulb on that. What I typically do is I just I just heat it up, get it really nice and melted, and then I'll just whap. And there it is, nice and clean. Obviously, you want to make sure you don't splash this in your face. I am wearing eye protection, by the way. There you go. Okay, here it is without the terminal strip. Now, at this point, what I want to do is just keep on taking stuff out. I don't want to put that terminal strip back in there and then try to remove these resistors so I can get these can capacitors off. What I want to do is I want to have as much space in here as I can to work around. So I'm going to go ahead and snip off these resistors and these diodes and pull these four can capacitors. Also in the interest of space and having 
room to work around. I'm gonna just slide this on and off switch out of the way, just temporarily. We're not gonna keep these diodes, so. There we go. Whenever clipping off something like this choke wire, clip it as close as possible to the terminal because you really don't want to have to splice in another wire later on. Okay, I love this part. I love just snipping and removing. Okay, I've got these top two, well, these three freed up. So I'm gonna start the removal process. I'm just gonna start sliding them out. And obviously we wanna clean this up before doing any more installation. I'm getting really frustrated by this being in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it. I'm gonna open up these two tabs, just slide it out. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, now what about this terminal strip? Well, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up the uh, terminal points that are going to take some new diodes. I'm gonna pull these off, replace them later. Oh, and what about this guy? I don't want this on there anymore. I wanna put a good grounded three prong power cable on there. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to go ahead and snip that off of there and desolder this part from the breaker switch. And this is gonna be my replacement. I'm just, this is a, just a really generic power cable from eBay. I think I paid about three or four bucks for it. Um, and I'm just gonna end up snipping off the end of it and using that for my power cable. Got everything out of there. Got a nice clean, uh, sort of clean terminal strip here. And my other terminal strip is clean for the most part. Now I'm going to dress all the wires and start putting things back in. And by dress the wires, I mean clip off all these wire ends that have solder on them, they're bent up, and then use wire snips to get something like that on the end. Okay, got that terminal strip back on. And I think what we want to do is work from the top down. So at this point, it's a very good idea to have a copy of the manual. If you don't have a physical copy, there are PDFs available online. And you wanna have this illustration handy for putting all the parts back in place the way they should be with the correct polarities where indicated. Very handy, this illustration. Next, I'm gonna install these two 10K resistors going from the terminal strip to pins one and three of the bias pot. Let's go ahead and install these electrolytic capacitors and then we'll have this top section done. As I'm installing, I realize that the newer resistors are not as long as the old ones. So this uh, 100K resistor doesn't go all the way to the ground lug. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take a lead from one of my old ones. I make a hook on each side. Okay, so I mash down on the ends. And there it is. Note that I've got the polarities showing so that later when I'm double checking everything, I have a clear view of what I did. Everything's, uh, everything's mounted in this neighborhood. This part's good. We also got our these two uh, wires going to the 11 pin socket. Okay, now as I install the four main capacitors, 
I want to note that this is C3, this is C1, and these are the two that get the special insulators under them. I don't know if you can tell, but there is an insulator separating the PC board from the chassis. That's on both of these. The other two are going to connect direct to the chassis. Also note the polarities, positive, positive. They should both be facing toward the middle. Now all four capacitors are installed. Note the polarities once again, positive, 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 positive. They're all facing each other. I'm gonna go ahead and keep these guys out of the way because I've got to install diodes and wires and I just wanna have a little room here to work. Next, I'm going to connect, or rather, I'm just going to position these three diodes. I'm not going to solder them or clip them yet because I'm going to have other stuff to solder there. I'm going to work from this side to this side. I'm going to start here so I can uh, get this stuff installed and then get my breaker, my breaker switch and on and off switch installed. I'm going to run this diode from pin one of the terminal strip to the positive turret. I'm going to run this 200k resistor from the positive to the negative. Okay, those are soldered and I went ahead and trimmed off the excess leads that were sticking out of there. Okay, now I've got uh, these three 200 ohm resistors installed. Um, keep in mind the original power supply called for 100k resistors. These are 200k and I need to solder that. Okay, next I'm going to add this wire that comes from pin four of the 11 pin socket. I'm gonna add it to this cluster here at the positive terminal. And then I'm gonna add a jumper. It's gonna go from this ground lead right there down to this positive terminal below. Okay, there is the jumper wire. And now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the red yellow from the transformer. And I made my little hook on the end of it. <clears throat> I'm just gonna set it in there like that and solder. And that should be the last thing we have to solder to that one connection. There's a lot on there. Now I've got this brown wire that goes from the 11 pin socket to ground and I'm going to ground it right there at uh, the turret on the negative point of the capacitor right there. I'm just going to feed it right inside and solder it. That I believe completes everything on this half of the power supply. At this point what I'm going to do is reinstall the switch and the breaker and go ahead and verify that everything in here is okay because once this stuff is installed, I don't wanna to have to come back and try to fix anything over here. So I've got the breaker installed and you'll note that it's very close to this resistor here. Not quite touching, but oh man, it's close. I'm gonna make sure to fold this resistor out of the way so it's nowhere near this breaker housing. Just like that. Now the switch and the breaker are installed and everything on this half of the power supply is done. Okay, I installed this uh, red wire coming from the choke to this point. Diode here, diode here. Observing the polarities, of course. <clears throat> also installed this uh, wire that runs from the center point of the switch. It goes here. And then I uh, just trimmed off all my excess leads and soldered the points that some of these hadn't been soldered yet. I want to install this diode here, but I got a problem. The new diodes are shorter. And this is the new one here, a little short. So I'm going to have to add a bit of length to it. Okay, those have all been soldered and clipped. Now, with the installation complete, I'm going to go through and tug on every connection, make sure nothing's loose, 
sometimes when you've got multiple components going to one terminal strip, you're soldering them, you think it's a good solder, but you've missed one. And you give it a little tug and it pulls right out. You don't want that. So I'm gonna go through, just give everything a little check. Make sure all my connections are good. Okay, I did a continuity check and I found out that the breaker was indeed making contact with that resistor lead. So I'm gonna put a little electrical tape on there and uh, try to do a little more to separate the two. Okay, that did it. That piece of electrical tape created the necessary buffer. However, I'm just not comfortable with that. And also, I don't like these old breakers anyway. They tend to get weak with age and they'll start randomly tripping. So I'm gonna just take that out and replace it. Okay, I got that breaker out of there. This is the wire going to the switch. I would really like to put a push button breaker there rated at three amps. I don't have any on hand and I don't wanna wait a week to get one from eBay. So I'm gonna install this um, glass fuse holder. This is rated at 250 volts, 10 amps maximum. And I've got a hole cutter. I'm just going to expand that hole a little bit and having this in place, it's going to just give us more space in here, give things a little more wiggle room. There it is. I feel a whole lot better with that layout. Here's my power cable. I'm just going to sacrifice one end of it and then dress the leads. My power cord fits nicely in that grommet. It's very snug but I did want to create a strain release. So I braided the three wires together and uh, now I'm just gonna dress the ends and attach them. All right, got everything connected now. Just gonna connect it to the breaker. So there it is. Okay, I've gone all through it. I've double checked all my work and now I've got a jumper going from the AC switch to AC common so I can test it. This is always the scary part. Plugging it in, turning it on, hoping it doesn't smoke. Okay, I got it plugged in and I got her on the Lazy Susan now. It's a little easier this way. So, she's humming. Let's do a measurement. I've got my meter set at DC voltage and black pin to ground, red pin to plus HV, 829 volts, right on. Now I'm gonna check the low voltage setting. Uh, can you see it? Right there, 370, that's right. Awesome. Now, if I uh, if I switch over to LV two hundred and fifty, this is something you'd only need for like a Heathkit mono bander. It's got two hundred seventy eight, roughly two eighty. Switch over to AC volts. I'm gonna put the black pin to the filament common. And the 12 volt, it should get about 14 volts. Yeah, that's about right. And then uh, this particular unit has a six volt filament output, which the others don't have. I'm getting seven volts, that's, that's good. When I made this video, it was primarily to show the assembly of this capacitor upgrade kit. It was not a restoration video. Normally I would remove this choke and I would sand off all this varnish and chipped paint and bring it down to the metal because this is just kind of tacky looking, don't you think? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that after the fact. I don't like doing that because you get a lot of grit everywhere, but I'm gonna just uh, seal off the rest of the power supply and do some sanding. And there it is. Big difference. Nice. And I've got the bottom on now. 
So at this point, I could take one of these old can capacitors and just twist off a cardboard sleeve like so. And do something like that and hot glue it down. That's an option, but you know what? I think that's a very handsome upgrade and I'm gonna leave it just like that. Of course, the, the real test now is to see how it performs with the rig. I have no doubt that it's gonna be fine, but it's good to try it out under load. So I've installed the top part of the cabinet. Notice how the colors don't match. That's because when I had this off, I cleaned it up using this stuff. It's amazing. I did not yet clean the bottom part. But take a look. This half's cleaned, that half isn't. Uh, using Windex or something like that doesn't quite cut it, but this stuff does. So anyway, I'm going to now clean the rest of the cabinet. Well, the final litmus test, operation under load, and it's working just fine. Um, it's you know there's a problem when you're transmitting and you blow a fuse, okay? This is not happening. So I'm going to keep uh, playing with it a little more, just uh, have a few more QSOs. But I would say this power supply is good to go. These are becoming increasingly rare, and when you do find them, they are in miserable condition for the most part. So uh, let's keep them on the air. I recommend this power supply upgrade kit. Works great. It's a pleasure to put together. And uh, yeah, this is Will in 5OLA73.